Now, the third episode, what I'd like to look at is how voltage changes in a galvanic cell. So, in particular, why at different concentrations uh, does the voltage change? So, I want to start a little bit, I think, with what do I understand to be true? And I want to clarify that I don't want to look at this from a thermodynamics perspective, but rather from a physical perspective. So, here's an animation. And in the animation here, we have a silver half cell and a zinc half cell. So when we hit play in this animation, what's going to happen is the electrons are going to be drawn towards the silver cations and away from the zinc cations that are in this metal. So when I say zinc cations, I, I don't mean the zinc cations here, but rather the zinc atoms have two electrons apiece that are going to be removed. And so I'm saying the zinc cation is going to be left behind there. Now, at standard concentration, standard temperature, all that, the voltage is plus 1.56 volts. And when we hit play, and we see that the electrons move over here towards the silver. And as the amount of silver ions decreases, what happens is that the voltage starts to change. Uh, and as the zinc ions over here uh, increase, and concentration, uh, the voltage starts to change where it starts to drop. So my understanding of this, let's start with volts. So we want to talk about what a voltage is. To me, a voltage is a measurement of how much pull, net pull there is on the electron and in the following sense. So the voltage allows us to look at the pull on the electron from a comparable perspective regardless of how long the wire so the voltage is how much energy gain the electron has as it moves from over here to over here. So in other words, the larger the pull on the silver and the, from the silver cations and the weaker the pull on the zinc cations, the larger potential difference there will be and the greater amount of energy change will occur. Now if I change the length of the wire, what will happen is I'll still get the same amount of energy change from here to here, it'll just take longer for that to occur. The biggest energy changes, in my head at least, are going to be occurring when the electrons separate from the zinc here and attach to the silver here, although I'm not 100% sure if that's correct. So the voltage is essentially a measure that results uh, from the differential pull in the electrons. So when we look at the fact that the voltage changes and we make that observation, that makes sense to me because what's happening over here is that I have more and more cations On this side pulling the electrons, which means they're not gaining as much energy as they move to just the other side. And then over here I've got fewer cations as the concentration decreases pulling on the electrons this way. So I get less and less pull this way, I get more and more pull this way, so eventually those electrons start to stop moving over this direction as much, and so therefore my voltage is decreasing. So it makes sense to me from a physical perspective that changing the concentration of these two things will influence the voltage. But when I dig a little deeper, I start to fall into a couple problems. The first one is, really, these electrons here are leaving specific cations. And so really what I have here is I have a zinc atom with two electrons, and I have a silver cation over here with kind of a spot for an electron, and another silver cation for a spot for an electron. And this electron is moving from here all the way over to here. And so part of me struggles with, why does it matter that there are more cations and fewer cations in these different locations? Because really the electron is still moving to the same cation. The electron that moved to this moved to a silver cation. The electron that's moving to this one is also moving to the same type of silver cation. So in the sense that the voltage eliminates the need for looking at how long the wire is, why does it matter that these other silvers are fewer in concentration? when the electron is moving to this one in particular. This one in particular was the same as this one was. So why are these ones influencing that, that, that voltage amount with regards to this? Is something that I have a hard time understanding. So when I break this down into a particle by particle motion of the electron, it almost seems like I can make a plausible uh, or estimate that the electron voltage shouldn't matter as long as the electrons are moving from the same cation to the same cation. And so I struggle a little bit with that, and then from that, the second part that I really struggle with is what's going on with the mathematics here? 
So I know that there's the Nernst equation and that's derived from all of the things that that comes from. But what I struggle with is, is there another way that we could look at this from a physical standpoint? So if we're looking at the net force on the electron somehow, some way, that we can make a better comparison and a, and a better mathematics. I know that the Nernst equation works, but I also know that it fails at certain points. And so my question is, is there some other means of looking at this where we could look at the fact that the zinc pulls so much on an electron and the silver pulls so much on an electron? What would the mathematics of coming up with the Nernst equation by looking at the physical perspective rather than the thermodynamical perspective? What would that look like? And has that ever been done? Has anyone ever gone through and looked at maybe a probability distribution and how the forces work on this and come up with, well, here's a way to model this that will give you a mathematical representation that addresses this singular versus bulk issue, show how it works. So for instance, I don't know how to take the fact that the electrons are moving from the zinc cations to the silver ones and expand it out and go, well, this is the reason why all of these other silver ions matter. So is the reason why the other silver ions matter and the other zinc ions matter, is it because they influence the resistance of this? I don't think that's the case. Or is it that somehow all of these silver ions produce a net force on all the electrons moving this way, and that causes them to gain more energy as they move this way? Or is there some net force on the zinc here? Because I also have a hard time with the fact that if this silver ion is pulling an electron towards it and it's going to come over here and attract that electron, most of the other silver ions seem to be pulling in directions that would tend to balance that out. So this one and this one are both pulling, but they're pulling left and right, more so than towards this particular cation. And so I'm, I'm skeptical with how does this end up translating into a way that I can come up with this you know, natural log of, of the reaction quotient without actually just going through some energy shortcuts that I don't really have a solid understanding behind. And so I feel like when I look at this that I can't do this without energy and therefore I don't feel like I have a solid understanding of what's happened. And in particular, or not in particular, but in addition to that, I also struggle a little bit with the idea that you can go through and you can look at things like So you can look at cells where you have concentration differences. So you can set up, I believe, a metal and a solution, and then the exact same metal and the exact same solution and connect a wire, connect a cell bridge, and end up with electricity flowing, even though these are both zinc and zinc 2 plus, just by having a concentration difference. So if this is 10 molar and this is 0 0.001 molar, I can get a current to flow from the one side to the other just by that concentration difference. And that again is something that part of me understands in the sense that we have these, these cations pulling, we have more of them on the one side and the other, and so therefore we get a greater pull in the electrons and they move from one side to the other. But I also struggle a little bit with the fact that there's also anions present in here and there's fewer anions in here. And how does that work? Why do the anions not contribute anything to this? Um, or do they contribute something to it and it somehow balances out where it doesn't matter and it's irrelevant. Uh, so those types of things are things that I, I don't really have a solid grasp on and I feel like that the underlying issue I have is that we have this equation that's not really clear why it works the way that it works and it doesn't also align with the way that this whole thing makes sense. So conceptually it makes sense to me why the voltage changes. Mathematically, I don't have a good understanding that connects to that concept. I have a separate concept being used to give me the explanation behind that concept.